Welcome everyone, my name is Peter, I am the pastor here at Kindersley Alliance Church. For those of you joining us online, we are really grateful to have you. Drop us a note, let us know that you're here. For those of you watching later on in the week, uh, drop us a note uh, just on the YouTube comments. We'd love to just hear your name, that's all we want to know. Uh, we won't do anything with those, just be glad that uh, you're with us. I have two announcements to give, uh, to offer, you may say. Uh, here's one of them. Um, I'll, start with, I'll start with this one uh, because the next one is really, really exciting, and so I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to build you up. It's like a ramp. You ready for this? If you would like to use the building for any reason during the week, we are eager for you to do that. We want to say yes as often as we possibly can. One of the things that we're running into is that we have the building booked at a certain time and then other people will show up just hoping to use it. It's a simple phone call uh, into Carmen and she will tell you when it's available. I want to encourage you to do that. Um, uh, we want this building to be available as much as possible. There is enough time, but we just do need to structure it a bit. Uh, so if you're coming in to use it, just give Carmen a call. Like I said, we want to say yes. Uh, I don't think we've said no for any reason yet other than just time. So uh, please feel free to do that. Okay, <clears throat> now for the exciting one. Are you ready for this? Not next week, but on the 30th, our numbers go back to 30% of the building capacity or 150 people, whichever is uh, the smaller number. For us, that means 150 people. That's very exciting. That means we will go back to a single service, which I am excited about um, for a couple reasons, but I love seeing everyone together. I love seeing, uh, man, both services come together and uh, us worshiping together and the church growing and the church being able to embrace each other, even if we can't actually embrace each other, but metaphorically we can do so. I'm excited about that. Uh, so that is your, you're being warned that uh, for in this service, the time isn't going to change. Keep doing what you're doing. You don't have to sign in on the 30th. Uh, you don't have to, to book a spot. Uh, it would be my great desire for us to crowd that 150 mark. Boy, that would be good. And when we do, yes, we are going to have to split into two services again. Let's just see how it goes. We might not crowd 150 right off the hop. What do I know? We maybe will. Here is my request to you in that. There are people who need to hear your voice inviting them to church. They have heard my voice. They have heard the voice of the elders. They need you. They need you to call them, go to their house, go to their workplace, whatever it is that you've got to do, and in an invitational, warm way, say, come. Some of them come for the first time. Some of them come again. Some of them are not going to feel comfortable doing that. They, they don't think it's wise. They don't think it's safe for whatever reason. Perhaps they're caring for someone else and they think being in a large group would not be wise. It's totally fine. We don't need to correct them. But some of them will come if they are invited. And we need this. And they need this. We need that, that last push. Anyone ever go to maybe a party or a celebration or something like that? You thought you weren't going to go, but then that last person said, yeah, just come. And when you went there, you were so glad you went. Has that ever happened to anyone? Yeah. We need that here too. So my encouragement and my request to you is call those who you know, call those within your circle, and invite them to come. Ask God who he would have you invite. They might be outside of your circle. Pray about it. Listen to God's voice and then be obedient to what he says. We have some brand new neighbors. They still got that brand new neighbor smell on them. They haven't been invited. They need to be invited. That's what God is telling me. And I need to act on that. I don't know if they're going to come. But I tell you, if they do come, I want you all to be cool. Be cool. But I'm not going to be cool. I'm going to be pretty excited. I'm just, I'll, I'll, I'll dumb it down for a bit. That's my request to you. Go and invite. Let's start to grow again together. I am delighted to invite up to the front uh, First Maryland, but this is Loose Land Bible Camp. Anyone here have any connection with Loose Land Bible Camp? Raise your hands. There's lots of hands that have gone up. They've got something special for us today. Tell us about what camp is like, and as you can imagine, this last this year and this past year, 
have been really interesting. So I'm looking forward to hearing this. Come on up. Not allowed to hug you. This is me hugging you all the way back here, okay? I'm glad you're here. You're very welcome here. All right. Thank you so much for inviting us and letting us come share what God is doing in and through Jerusalem Bible Camp. What a year it has been for all of us, and I'm sure um, our theme last year was God Goes With You, and it just seems so appropriate to keep that same theme this year because we're so thankful he does. Restrictions, mandates, regulations, um, they were all in place like they were in place for you in many cases. Because of that, we had 60 campers instead of the 600 that we usually have um, taking part in school days and camp weeks. We did open that new washroom. What a delight that is. Um, that was exciting for all of us, and it was just so needed. And we thank you each for donations that you brought in and prayer that helped it that come to be. Charity was the very first person taking a shower there, and I did ask her to hold, even though mosquitoes were bugging her a little bit in that picture, she doesn't show it, and yes, it was enjoyed by all of us, that um, new building. Campers being kids, um, it was just so good to have them outside, running, playing, um, they just appreciated the time. Um, we bu did build they did build um, Tire Mountain. It might not be a mountain in Alberta, but it is a mountain in the prairies, and they're still painting one more coat of paint, um, a different color yet, um, on that mountain. And the idea is that we can use it for play, or they could use it for devotional times, or movie nights, or there should be lots of opportunities to put it into use. We were thankful for Doug and Cole to come and bring in a drone session and offer things that we would not otherwise be able to offer. Um, that was just a lot of fun that day for all. Times we are in. The government grants, and I'm going to just change here a little so I can see it better. Government grants are very unlikely in the future um, for several reasons. Um, the person, you know the story with the Canada Suburb Jobs Grants. There was the check mark that... Um, Biblically, we could not sign. Our legal department put together a paragraph that we could. We welcome each and every camper into camp and love them coming. Um, we will look for ways to invite more. But um, for our staff, our which we now call summer missionaries because it's more the role that they play, um, we definitely would not ever ask anyone to teach something that they haven't wholeheartedly believed themselves. The other opportunity for grants were with both a federal that we received and with a provincial. But the story behind them is we're told we're being asked to return the money because when they initially asked, it's like your business number is 15, 16 numbers, letters. Um, that went together and was fine. We all applied. Um, everything seemed good. And then towards the end of the year, they reduced that to only accepting the first nine numbers. Because of that, all One Hope Canada camps across the country have the first nine numbers the same, and then the other ones are different. So only our parent company can c collect on that one. So we're, we haven't used the money, but we're just told they're going to ask for it back. Day campers, um, day camps definitely reduce the number um, with those that could come from a distance. And we're in contact with them. A lot are waiting still to see what happens this year. We haven't been told. And work is definitely in the work. Saskatchewan um, Camping Associ Association has worked with protocols and conversations right throughout the year. So we are hopeful. We're told to be encouraged. We don't know. Um, costs are rising always. Um, we, again, haven't raised our registration fees. We want campers to come. And so with that, um, we just realize that, yeah, as things go up, it gets a little bit tougher to do some of that. Um, each year, um, we invite our speakers and our cooks and last year, we did give everyone the opportunity to not come. If you felt uneasy or uncomfortable in any way with all that was going on, we invited them not to come that year, to come back another year. Um, and with that, I cooked for two weeks in the as head cook, and our summer missionaries stepped in uh, for a day during the week to speak. And they were a younger team, but so very capable. Um, will overnight camps be allowed? What restrictions will be required? Questions unknown stranger than ever before but God and I love that but God is still in control and yes God does go with us and our verse was taken from Deuteronomy 31 6 
Um, last year, One Hope Canada encouraged each of our camps to go ahead until we're told we couldn't, and that's exactly what we did. Um, so we did go ahead. We only had 60 campers, but we did have 60 campers. Um, and the influence on them and their families, which we saw much more often because they were going and coming each day, was huge. And I want to tell you the story about two girls, two women, and two families. Two girls came to camp together um, from the same community. They carpooled um, as they came in. And several times during the week, they talked about the one girl went to Catholic church in her community. The other girl didn't because her mom didn't believe in God. And these conversations continued. Like, yeah, it was noticeably uh, they told lots of people these over the course of the week. Um, our daughter-in-law, Corey, was the um, speaker that week, and so she presented the gospel midweek clearly, and with that we gave the EvangiCube challenge, um, that kind of toy that tells the gospel message that if anyone could come and tell us that story the next day um, at the tuck shop, they'd get a free treat. Bribery at its best. <laughs> and anyway, everybody comes and shares that message, but these girls shared with much more detail than anybody else, and their eyes sparkled. They took their snack, and they went and sat down next to the veranda, under the veranda, and our Corey went and sat down with them and just said, what do you, um, th well they again told her the story about how one went to church, one didn't because their mom didn't believe in God, and Corey just asked, um, what do you think? And their eyes sparkled, and one of them said, I think he's good, and I just can't stop saying the words of that evangelist over and over again in my mind. That's God. That's nothing we can do. It's just his power working through our, our workers, and we're just so grateful that they heard that message and they know that message, and they talked about what they told their parents going and coming each day. It wasn't about the games being played. It was about the stories they were hearing. Two women offered from their community to bring campers from their area if that would help families um, bring kids to camp. That way they would only have to make one trip each day. Two families in our area took in a camper family that wouldn't have been able to come a distance. Um, another mother um, rented a hotel room for the week so her girls could come. So prayer, lots of it. We couldn't do it without you, and we know that there's nothing in and of ourselves that we could do for kingdom good um, that isn't backed by prayer. Thank you for that. What's next? The project now that we're taking on is another really needed project. If you know our dining room and kitchen, it is outdated, but it is to move that um, the dining room kitchen into the chapel. And that chapel is a well-insulated, dry, well-constructed building. Um, there's it would double the floor space. There's so much potential. And with that, we've started a donation tree that will be painted on the wall as you come in the chapel, if you know how ours looks. and. Um, the leaves, as they're added, will be by donations and the colors by amounts of donations. People can either have a donor name on or they could put a memory of a loved one or a Bible verse, something like that too. But we're just anxiously looking ahead to um, see having a visual tell us how we're doing in this project. Our summer missionaries, they are an awesome team. Um, they humble my heart and make me proud every year. They're goofy and they're funny, and sometimes I'm the brunt of their joke, um, and that's okay, too. Um, I love them dearly, and to see them come back again and again. Last year, we paid them for five weeks, and they volunteered for five weeks. So, um, again, they just really trust God with their finances as well as with their lives, and we're grateful for that. Now I'm going to, I think it's best to hear from our staff and from campers, so I'm going to invite Jessica up to give a camper's perspective, and uh, yeah, if you want to just come up now, that would be great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jessica, and uh, so if you don't know me, um, I have to admit, I am extremely nervous. My notes are on my phone, so I need to yank that out of my pocket. So when me and Marilyn were talking a little while ago, she, after our call was over, she sent me some questions. And these are the questions. <laughs> When you think about LBC, or Eastland Bible Camp, what comes to mind? I think about having the opportunity to be a camper and seeing friends that I've made in the past. Campfire comes to my mind a lot, mostly because it's a time where I get to relax a bit 
and we get to learn about the people around us. The next question is, my three favorite happenings in a, cam in a camp day. <laughs> um, breakfast, because it wakes me up. Um, chapel, because we get to learn things that aren't boring, like school, no offense. Um, <laughs> and wide games, because they're fun. How has LBC helped me grow in Christ? Um, it's helped me to be who I am in Christ. It has helped me to be myself a bit more and not to be worried about how others see me because I know how God sees me and I think it's pretty good. <laughs> and what God is currently teaching me, God is teaching me how to serve others around me even when it's hard to love them. And it also teaching me how to, I guess, reach out to those who have hurt me in the past and show kindness. And why am I interested in the, di in the discipleship <laughs> team? <laughs> well, I've always seen that when people start the discipleship work team, they get a chance to become staff and they learn a lot about God and have the opportunity to be a good influence and that makes a difference in kids' lives. And that's exactly what I would love to do someday. All right, that's all. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Corey, and I am one of the summer missionaries this year at Luceland Bible Camp, um, and we're just going to answer a few questions, kind of like how Jessica did, and from the staff perspective, I have them on my phone as well. The first question we were asked is, when we come to LBC, or when we think of LBC, what comes to mind? And for me, I've been going to LBC for a long time, well, this is what, my 14th year now at F between camper and staff, and I treat LBC like a second home. So every summer when I walk onto those grounds, it's just like coming home. It's, it's a fresh feeling, it's rejuvenating, it's loving, and I can just see God's work everywhere, and it's just a constant reminder of everything that I love in life and everything that I just see in God and what I want to do in life as well. Good morning, everybody. Um, and when I think of LBC, I also think of home. Um, I literally call LBC uh, my second home. And uh, yeah, I think of the summer missionaries and the campers as my family. Um, when I think of LBC, I feel safe but challenged. Um, I get to work hard, but I feel really fulfilled by it. And I think about joy, fun, and faith. Um, so yeah, what are my three favorite happenings in a camp day? My favorite part of the day is campfire time. Um, I love being able to sing both funny songs and meaningful songs. And it's amazing to be able to hear um, staff testimonies and to be able to connect with the campers on a deeper level. Um, my second favorite uh, time is meal time because it's a great time to just sit with the kids and fellowship with them. And um, they're not stressed about you, know, you uh, trying to manipulate them or anything like they just are so trusting and we love to be able to just yeah sit with them and get to know them better um, and I also love tuck time because that's the time I get to lifeguard and so it's just the time to be by the pool and again fellowship with the kids and with the staff um, yeah so basically anytime we get to fellowship really intentionally with the kids uh, my favorite happenings I don't know if I have a particular order but for sure would be worship and chapel time. There's just something about, you know, walking and just everybody singing together, praising the Lord and just learning. You know, every week you have a different speaker who talks in different ways and just being able to absorb all this information, just see how it affects kids and then having them come up to me after and talk time and ask questions and all this back and forth. It's, it's really cool. Um, one of my favorite activities has got to be a laser tag. You know, it's super fun going out, running around, shooting toy lasers at people. And, you know, it's, just, it's a really good way to, you know, get out there and get active. Um, and my next favorite would be meal times. 
I don't think I've ever had a bad cook ever in at camp or a bad meal ever cooked. The cooks are always the nicest people in the world. They're always willing to talk. And like Olivia said, being able to, you know, just it's a good time to just sit down and have, you know, a good chats and a fun time with all the campers. Um, what made me want to come back to camp again this year? Um, well, that's easy. I, I love camp. There's just something about it that just keeps drawing me back, keeps drawing me back. I was thinking about, you know, going and getting a different job this year, you know, to help with school and stuff, but there's just something about camp that just always draws me back, always draws me back. And it's just all this time and fellowship, it, it's just something I can never get away from. Uh, yeah, for me, there were so many reasons why I wanted to come back to camp. Um, yeah, like I said, camp is like a second home to me, and I can't be away from home for too long. Um, I love being able to impact the kids and teach them about Jesus. Um, that story Marilyn shared about the two little girls, just every time I talk about it with people, my face lights up and I get so excited for camp. Um, yeah, I feel like camp is my happy place. It's where God teaches me so much and um, I get God's joy and God's peace. Um, and I know that camp is where God has called me and so that just makes it so clear to me uh, that I should be here. Uh, so the next question is, what's it like living in a Christian community um, in Christian community, and does it help grow uh, my faith? So for me, I go to Briarcrest College and Seminary. Um, I go to the college there, and I live in Karenport, so I'm kind of in a Christian environment all year long, but camp is different because um, you're just so much closer with everybody, um, and everyone is so intentional in their faith, and you're challenging each other to be better, to read your Bible more, to pray more, um, and I think that's just an awesome way to live, and um, those are things that I try and bring back to my college. Um, so yeah, I love being able to uh, yeah live uh, in a Christian community and challenge each other in this way. Um, to me, Christian community is super, super important. If it wasn't for Christian community, I never would have come to the Lord, and it's because of camp and being with you know all these people, you know all these influences that allow me to learn more and continue to want to keep growing with people you know it, we're, we weren't meant to you know do this alone you know this is a community thing and it's something that i've really grown to love and care for and it helps make me better uh, um, how has camp changed my life and how has it equipped me for leadership um well camp introduced me to god so i'd say that's a really big life changer right there um, it's, it's allowed me to evolve from my younger, more reckless self into someone I can, I can, you know, I'm, I often, you know, think I'm like, man, I do this so bad, or I do this so bad, but I often have people telling me, it's like, no, it's okay, you're, you're so, you're so good and stuff, and if it's not for camp to, you know, change me to be a better person, then I wouldn't be, you know, the, the person I am today. And as for leadership, um, I never saw myself as a leader ever before. I was always the one in the corner at the back, and camp really, you know, allowed me to come out of my shell and be able to be out there, put myself out there, and in every aspect of camp, there's a different quality of leadership required, and being able to, you know, going through the camp and from activity to activity, you learn all these things, and it's, yeah, I'd say that's how it's happened. Camp has changed my life in so many ways. Uh, my first summer at camp, I was kind of there hesitantly, and I didn't think that God was really going to change me in any way, um, but I was completely wrong. God quickly changed my perspective on camp and about um, leadership. Um, through camp, I've learned um, how to lead in more effective ways. Um, I've learned about unity and about how to um, manage conflict and how to confront people in loving ways. I've also learned about humility and service and just wanting to serve and love other people because God has called us to, to do that. Um, and these leadership skills have been able to be transferred into all areas of my life, not just camp, so that's been super helpful. Um, so do COVID restrictions discourage me about camp this summer? Discouragement can come at some point, um, but through last year and even planning for this year, um, even with all the question marks and all of the uncertainty, I know that God is going to do amazing things because his plan is so much bigger than ours. And so when I do get discouraged, I can just take that to God and 
know that he is going to like blow us away with everything that he does. Um, I'd have to agree pretty well completely with Olivia. After last year and working through COVID and it all being a surprise and now being a year prepared and stuff, while there might be some lots of question marks and a lot of unknowns, I, I don't feel as very discouraged because I know that if, if we can survive last year knowing nothing, and now we know well, only half as much more as we would like, but we know so much more even, and we're so much more prepared. Like, I, I find it hard to be discouraged because I know this is God's plan and he has it under control. Uh, what does surrender to the lordship of Jesus mean to me, and what does it look like in my life? To me, surrender is a challenging topic because I grew up in a home that wasn't religious, so, you know, you know, it was just, you know, do good, that's it. And now it's like, oh, there's so much more to it, you know, I have to pour out my life into this, and I have to know that, you know, being good isn't good enough, I have to work at not being bad which some people might say sounds the same, but it's, it's really not when I, when I look at it. And so, uh, so it's, yeah, it's just devoting to God and, you know, not my plan, his plan. Not my way, his way. And um, I have, you know, those, I grew up with a lot of bad habits, you know, those kind of habits and stuff like I used to have really bad language. It's one of those things that I have to work really hard to go against and, you know, become less bad at it, if that makes sense. Um, surrender to Jesus to me is taking time to be with him each day and making him a priority in my life, um, the number one priority. Um, it means that God will sometimes call me to do things that I don't want to do. I'm not a very outgoing person, and um, surrender means if God calls me to go and pray for a stranger, someone I don't know very well, I go and do it. Or if God says, um, you know, that I haven't been prioritizing him and I should spend time reading the Bible instead of going out and watching a movie with my friend. I'm going to stay home and do that. Um, and this is also something that um, is a physical thing I do when I pray. Um, surrendering to Jesus means actually opening my hands when I pray to God and saying, like, God, give me uh, what I need, but it's also to show that my hands are open um, and that I'm willing to give up anything that God has not called me to have. Um, so a few prayer requests for me personally and for Lisa in this summer. Um, yeah, just pray that there are lots of campers who want to come and be impacted. Um, camp is impactful whether you have two kids there or whether you have 50, but we want to be able to impact as many kids as we can. Um, yeah. Pray that the restrictions wouldn't be too severe, that we'd be able to do things somewhat uh, more normal than maybe we can right now. And just pray for health and safety at our camp. Um, for me personally, uh, just pray for my school in the fall. Uh, we don't exactly know what things will look like, but just that um, school would go well for me and that I would um, be able to, yeah, uh, manage my time well and just be able to um, connect with people there. Um, yeah, for LBC and prayers, you know, especially for the staff, you know, energy and wisdom, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Um, it might not always seem like it from the outside, but it's, it's a lot of work, you know, trying to keep up with all these kids day after day and all these questions, you know, both physically and mentally, you know, we're often drained at the end of a day, at the end of a week, and, you know, it takes... It takes really a lot, and so prayer for, you know, the energy and wisdom to keep going on each day, each day to be refreshed and full and putting everything we can into it. Um, for me personally, um, I'm a student, so I always got to be working at those stud <laughs> at studies, and I'm moving away for the first time, so that kind of kind of stuff, it's scary, you know, and it's an di interesting time in our world, so prayers for safety and um, yeah, so the last question, um, I'm not sure how many of you guys know, but starting May 1st, I stepped into an associate director position at Loosland Bible Camp, um, and so this last question is just asking why I stepped into that, um, and why I opened myself up to future leadership possibilities. So last summer, um, it was kind of the beginning of COVID, and I just felt very lost, and 
um, kind of felt like I had no purpose and um, yeah, throughout the spring and the summer just praying, like, God, where do you want me? What direction do you want my life to go in? And he was very clearly saying LBC, but I didn't know what that meant. Um, and so throughout the summer, I was just praying, like, God, what does that look like? And one day I was talking to Blanca, and I made a joke about becoming director of Leafland someday. And I said it purely as a joke, and she took it to Marilyn and said, oh, Olivia might want to be director someday. And so Marilyn comes up to me a few days later, and she's like, were you serious about that? And I was like, well, no, but I'll pray about it if this is something you think we should. Um, and so, yeah, through praying with Marilyn and with Blanca and with other people, it just seemed very clear that God wanted me um, to step in that direction. Um, we're not exactly sure what that'll look like yet, but yeah, taking on this um, position is um, super helpful for, again, growing my leadership. Um, and yeah, it helps Marilyn out taking on um, different tasks. Um, and it's been great to just connect with her and with um, the other staff and a little bit with the board this year and just figuring out what a future at LBC would look like. Um, and again, this has to do with surrender. Um, it's been a lot of opening my hands to God and saying, okay, God, if you don't want me to do this, like, I won't do it. And so far it's been, yes, I want you to do this. And so just stepping out in faith, and that's been um, really awesome.
Lord God, we want to pray for the kids uh, who do not yet know that they are coming and for the leaders who do not yet know which kids are coming. We want to pray for this camp that has uh, reached out into the world to be a shining light, to be salt, and has done so for decades. We want to pray for a camp that has a history of doing more with less. And often for people with less. Holy Spirit, all of the money is yours. All of the people is yours. All of the stuff and all of the time is yours. The very ground we stand on is yours. The air we breathe is yours. Lord, would you send enough We pray for the kids that will hear your name in love, perhaps for the first time, perhaps not. Let them hear it and hear it well. Let them hear the tone of your voice through the voices of these leaders, through this camp, or just in their ear. And let them be drawn to you. No one comes to the Father except through you. Draw them near, Lord God. Thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. For those of you who don't know, Looseland Camp is just up the road here. If I said an hour, would that get us there? Roughly an hour. There's a website, which uh, those of you watching at home, just looselandbiblecamp.com. .ca. Looselandbiblecamp.ca. Go on there. Uh, those of you who live far away, uh, I'll bet there's a way that you can get involved. You can get involved with prayer. You can get involved financially. Maybe you can get involved by sending someone. Uh, this camp would be very receptive to that. For those of us uh, sitting here and for those of us at home watching, I will offer you the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you all the days of your life. Come back next week. There's more. It's good. We'll see you next week.